right, here we go then. So, a little bit of everything, rose gold wise. This card here, it's quite a simple easel card. So we're going to do that simple easel card. I'm going to show you a little bit of how to foil onto the acetate. We're going to be looking at some of the edgeable dies and I'm going to show you the fantastic technique using those uh, flowers as well. So let's get started first of all. I've got my foil press warmed up, so I think what we'll do is we'll do the foiling first. Now, this here is the foiling die. So if I get this all out and get it to show you, it actually comes in three parts. So you've got the base outer foiling die. You've got the inner part here, which is the do more of what makes you sparkle. And then this here is actually a cutting die so that you can cut out this do more of what makes you sparkle. Now I'm going to use, I'm going to foil onto a little bit of acetate, which means on my foil press, I'm going to put the out, before it. you should always, by the way, before you get started, make sure you've got your foil and a pair of scissors to hand so you're ready to go. So I'm going to put the outer one and I'm going to put the inner one in with it. Now for a die of this size, what you want to do is set your foil press to 20 seconds. So 20 seconds, press the start button, I'll show you it here. So we've got 20 and it's counting down. Now let's have a look. I'm going to foil onto acetate. So I have my acetate and I've also got a piece of the, the foil. Now, isn't this fabulous? It's like a, it's a rose colour, but it's got that iridescent gold fleck in it because we already do a rose gold. So I didn't think there was any need to do another rose gold foil. When you hear the beep, what you're going to do is take the foil and go face down with your foil and then get your acetate and pop your acetate in there as well. So it's going to foil onto the acetate. Now, a great tip I would give you is, is if you do the acetate larger than what you need, then what you can do is you can always trim it to size. It's much easier than trying to perfectly position where you're going to put that acetate. Now, you might want to play about with your foil press, the acetate, the timings. Um, I found 20 seconds is about right for this one. Let's have a look. If I lift this off and peel it away to the camera, you can see you get that fantastic transfer. Now, if you find you're getting any overfoiling, I've got some tiny weeny little bits around here. They do just uh, they do just scrape off. But if you ever find you get any overfoiling, that means you're foiling it for too long. So let's pop the asset. We'll pop you there. When I put the foil press on, notice what I'm doing is I'm not plugging it back in. So I'm leaving it there. And I'll put these foil press pieces just down here. In fact, I'll pop them back on my sheet so that we don't lose anything there. There we go. And I'm going to get this ready. So we've got now the foil piece here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim it to exactly the size that we want. So I'm going to trim it. Let's have a look when I trim this under I'll just take a little bit off the top and bottom and then let's see what sort of size this is going to work out at right here we go so if I trim right to the edge of the cardstock uh, the edge of the cardstock the edge of the lovely foiled part on the acetate but I've left a little bit extra on the top and the bottom so you've got that beautiful foiling and I've left a little piece extra on the top and the bottom because what you're going to do is then pop this onto your scoreboard and we're going to actually give ourselves a little piece just to be able to fold it over the edge. So can you see there, if we score along the top and the bottom part here, you're going to have that perfectly sized so that when we fold these over, we've got like a nice gap to be able to stick this onto our piece of card. Now, I've done a Sarah and I've already got the piece of card ready. Oh, there's my acetate pop you down there I just cut a nice square of card now look what you need to do you need to cut your square of card smaller than what your acetate wrap is because what you're going to do is you're going to wrap this around stick it at the top and then also stick it under at the bottom now what I've just realized is the one that I've got ready earlier didn't quite cut it quite as close to the edges let's have a look at this one here so I, cut, I, I just cut it a little bit wider, there we go, so that it was the same width. So I'll use that one. It's exactly the same as what you've just seen me do, though. And a great tip now, when I'm sticking acetate on, it's definitely worth using your red liner tape because it's just nice and strong. And look what I'm going to do. I'm going to pop some right up at the edge there where we're right at the fold line. 
and then I'm going to pop another piece on the edge of this here. So there's my, there's my first piece on. Right the same down here. So I'm going to go along the bottom part here, just above where the crease line is. And then another little part here, above where this crease line is. There we go. Now, getting the back off your red liner tape, here's how I do it. I'll give it a good stick down, use your pokey tool, and you can just kind of go underneath from your pokey tool. And what it'll do is it'll end up picking up that back. So can you see, I'm just scraping it under, picks up the back, but leaves the rest of the tape on there. And then this is just going to wrap perfectly around the base there. And it's a lovely die. And obviously, well, I don't have a die. For, like a die foil stamp or whatever. Hang on, this is not quite, I think I was going to go the other way. Oh, yes, this is the right way. It's not quite square, this one. There we go. First piece and then the second piece on there as well. And that is going to go lovely on the top of my card. So there's my acetate wrap round piece. And if you have a look from the close up here, you'll see it's a, it's a lovely shaping. So depending on how big you want this curve to be, depends on how big you cut your piece of cardstock or how big you trim your acetate to. Uh, and, and quite honestly, a lot of the time, if I do it, if I, need, if I know it needs to go in an envelope, I'll flatten it down a little bit based on how deep of an embella box that I can make, okay? Right, let's pop you two bits down there and get the, get the easel card itself made. So for a basic easel card, what you're going to do is you're going to start off, we're just going to do this as a standard size using some A4 cardstock. So to fold your A4 in half, we're going one little notch before the six. It's not quite in half, but it's near enough. One little notch before the six. And then also for your quarter fold, you're going one little notch before the three here. Okay. And then that is going to fold in half. And then this will fold in half again. So that's how you get the base of your easel card. And then what we're going to do is just trim it. So I'm going to trim it to the same size square. So whereas it was just before the six, we're going to do the same here. Just bring it just before the six. And then with this other piece of cardstock, I'm going to trim this square to just, it's about five. It is five and seven eighths of an inch is what it is. So for me, I'm just going part way between the five and the six. And you'll see that will give you the perfect base easel here. That's going to give me my lovely easel card standing up. So what I'm going to do is just go, I think I'll use tape pen for this. Yep. You just put tape on the very bottom part of your card here. And then this will line up absolutely perfectly. Do you know what I've just realised? So that uh, the card that I was looking for, there's my easel card I've just made. <laughs> He's the one I'd prepared earlier that I was going to cut. It. It's exactly the same though. That's how you make a nice basic easel card anyway. That's your just shy on six inches. Okay. So let's have a look. So I've got another, another spare one for later. Little bit of matting and layering. Now with the rose gold, the papers are beautiful. And what I've done is I've taken a little bit. This is the 12 by 12 pad. So in the 12 by 12 pad, you've got that beautiful all over background and it's a different size. If I show you in the 6 by 6 pad, here's the same paper in the 6 by 6 pad. You can see how the print is at a completely different size. But I've used the 12 by 12 one here. So I've got that 12 by 12, just matted it onto a little bit of the, um, the rose gold glitter card. It's fabulous, that rose gold glitter card. That's going to give me a nice background piece here. So that's going to be the, the one there. And then I've got my stopper here. So I'm going to raise the stopper up with a little bit of foam. I've got some really nice, uh, I've got some cracking foam tape under here. I'm going with a nice big piece so we can get a nice big stopper. The trick with your easel cards, you see, is that this needs to be raised up because your card needs something to stand against. So you see, if I pop that there, now that's perfectly raised up to form a stopper for the easel. So there's the basic easel card kind of ready to go. So on the top bit, we're going to pop our do more of what makes you sparkle. So that's going to go on here. Now to glue that down, 
Again, I'm going to use a little bit of the red liner tape just because we're gluing onto the acetate. So I want it to stick nice, nice and flat. I don't want any bobbling or anything like that. So I'm going to go straight over there with my piece of red liner tape and then straight over the back part again. And that is going to give us a really, really good stick down. There's nothing worse than um, popping your acetate on and then using it like a wet glue to try and stick this piece down flat. I will just pop another piece right across the middle there to be extra sure. Um, trying to stick that on flat and finding that uh, it, bu it buckles up off the paper later. That does not look professional at all. Here we go, top tip again with that uh, with the porky tool. Help you lift all the backs off your red liner tape. And one, two, three here. And then that's going to go on the front of the easel. And I'm just positioning that down. There we go. So that is looking fabulous, right? So we just want a nice stopper piece here to put it in place. Now, one of the lovely dies in this collection is this one here, and it is an edgeable, which means that when we take it, if I cut it along a piece of uh, piece of cardstock, so I've just got a nice piece of the uh, the the rose coloured cardstock in this collection. If I pop it along here, you'll see the cut line starts here runs all the way around to here but this stays connected in the card so it means i can cut this right at the base of a card here there we go and i'm just going to stick that just regular sandwich on your gemini gemini or gemini junior or whatever it is uh, let's have a look i'll pop it this way so you can see it i'm going to position that right near the base here hold it in place with a little bit of tape so it's always a great idea and hold it in place with the tape on the side that is going to come away then you want your clear cutting plate magnetic and your top cutting plate and we're going to go and send that straight through the gemini there we go. so that is going to form like a nice base for our stopper up here and then what i'm going to do to embellish that a little bit further is just do one of the flowers as well that comes in here. So here's that nice base. Take that away. And then just, you see, look, I mean, look how easy that releases from the die. Beautiful. And that is going to go form a lovely stopper down there. Now, again, another nice tip. If you're using your tape pen here, I use my, my regular tape pen all over the back, but then I use the dotty tape pen over the detail of the die. So that's giving me glue all in these pieces here. So that when I stick this into place, there we go, even all your die cut piece will stick down flat. You don't get any bowing parts in here. It's all going to stick flat beautifully. So there's our base. And then should we do one of those lovely flowers to pop around it? Let's have a little look. I've got the flower die. So here we go, here's our flower die here. And when you take it out, you'll see we've got this piece here, which is your long quilling die. There we go. You've got a couple of nice flourishes, lovely leaf, and this part is your stamen. Now you can cut multiple layers of your foam at once. So I've got a piece of the foam. If you can cut, to be honest, I would say you can comfortably cut like four, six layers in one pass. So I'll pop the foam on the uh, the base of the machine. These dies will all fit in your um, Gemini Mini as well, those of you that like to use a Mini. There's my stamens. Let's pop the stamens on there too. In fact, let's just make sure. If I fold this over the other way, then we'll go slightly smaller that way. Make sure I've got the whole die on. So there's my die fitting on there. And then there's my stamens going to just squeeze on there as well. Yeah, I don't like any waste, do I not? Where's my tape? Holding these all in place to send them through. There we go. Perfect. So, same sandwich combination. Clear, magnetic, top. Whiz them through your machine. Now, you'll see in the set, we also have some traditional stamens. So I'm going to use the cutout stamen around the original stamens. 
all will become clear in just a second. There we go. Right, so when we lift these off, just taking that tape off as well. There we go. I've got my, there's the, the cutout stamens that we've just done. And remember, we've got two layers of those because we did fold our form over in half. So there's my two layers of stamens in there. And then I've got two layers of the form flower. So another few top tips for you here. I like to get the stamens. Three is a good number because what you can do is take three, fold them in half so that you've got them all together at the same spot and then just get a little bit of tape and I'm just going to roll them together just hold, using the tape to hold it at the bottom just to give me something to grab onto. There we go. So there's my stamens. Then what I'm going to do is take this stamen piece, a little bit, is that the smallest red line of tape I've got? I'm sure I've got a smaller one in here somewhere. Yes, I have. Here we go. There's the even finer one. Perfect. A little bit of red liner tape along the bottom of these stamens here. And then we're going to wrap these stamens around our, our um, traditional stamens as it was. So can you see I've got a nice good stick on there. Just peeling the back off the red liner. Tell you what, of all the parts on this, this is probably the most difficult, getting the back off my tape. Let's have a look, see if I can do it with the poker tool. There we go. Come on. Come on, red liner tape. Let's try it from this end. No. There we go. Right, there's the back coming off. Then watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to wrap these stamens around those base stamens. So I'm going to start here and just wrap these around. And then I'm taking that stamen and wrapping it around the, the uh, longer stamens that we have. So that is giving me a nice little bushy part of stamens in the middle. Yep. Then we'll get out two pieces of the flower. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same again. I'm going to lift these out and I'm going to pop a little bit of red liner tape on them before we do any of the heating. Let's have a look. That hasn't, just hasn't quite caught the dye there. So again, just red liner tape along the bottom. You can use your glue gun to hold your quilled flowers together. I've just found that this is the kind of easiest way to, to handle these. It just does make it just that little bit easier to handle them all into place. So there's my first one there. And then my second one here. So I'm, I'm getting all the sticky ready before we put them on the iron. So some top tips for heating your stamens, okay? You want to have your iron as hot as you can possibly get it. So the highest setting, and I know you can buy specialist craft irons and everything like that, but honestly, you really don't need to. Uh, just a little cheap home iron is absolutely perfect. So I'm making sure I've got all my sticky on there before we start, giving it a good press down. And then watch what happens when I bring in the iron. So I've got my iron here. And I'm going to hold it. So I'm, if you want the flower to bloom outwards, what you're going to do is you're going to hold your, um, you're going to hold it with your red liner tape facing forward because they bubble forwards. If you want them to cup inwards, and I'll try and find a nice card and show you the difference. Uh, there's a card that I had a couple on. I'm sure I'll find it. I'll find it in a little bit and show you. But there's two different types. You can cup them outwards or cup them inwards. But this is going to be to cup them outwards. So can you see, you just hold them on the iron. And as you hold them on the iron, you can see they will just all form this little kind of cuppy shape. The longer you hold them on there, the more they will cup. So you can see there, each one of them is shaped absolutely perfectly into that little cup. You're going to let them just cool in that cup shape. So let me show you it again. I'll, I'll turn the iron slightly to the side so you can see it from like a side view this time. So as we pop them on, as you leave them on, a little bit of time and you can see they form that cup. So let's do the next ones here. Leave them on a few seconds and they form that lovely bubbly shape. And actually it's brilliant to see them. If I show you at the very, very end. In fact, let's do this on the close-up camera, okay? 
So, uh, sorry, the overhead camera is what I want to show you. So, can you see that one is flat? Yep, that one's just a regular flat one that didn't touch the iron. Here are all the ones that have touched the iron and how they formed that lovely bubbly shape right in front of your eyes. So it's very easy to do. All you're doing is holding it against the iron. Right, so sticking them together. What you're going to peel the backing. Oh, here's, the t here's this tricky bit. Peeling the backing off your tape. Who would have thought when it came to making flowers this would be the difficult part? Uh, here we go. If you, the best way to do this is basically don't cut your nails too short. That's where I've, that's where I've gone wrong. So here we go. We'll get that. There's the backing coming off there. She says optimistically. This is the bit we normally have uh, pre-prepared. You see, when we're on TV, oh, we've already took the backing off all of our tape. Hold that in place, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick the second layer over top of it. So I'm going to stick in between the gaps so that I get like petals kind of offsetting each other. So I'm just going to pop all of those in between all the gaps. Start from the largest one, you'll find it's easier. I couldn't tell you why, but if you start from the large, I've just found as I've, I've done a few of these, starting from the largest one, it is much easier to stick all these together. Right, you stay there. That's quite a good tip actually, I've just, first time I've done it like this, uh, stick the edge of your... Stick, stick the edge of one piece down onto the t uh, onto the table and then they release easier. So look at that. So we've now got like a long double strip as it was. And then we're going to peel the backing off this tape and we're going to quill this flower. So those of you who've maybe never tried the quilling flowers before, this is a brilliant way to kind of do it at an advanced level with your flower forming foam. Right, there we go. So, bring our stamens back in. I'm going to start off by sticking around the stamens that first piece and we're just going to go around and round so that you start and see, if you can see it from the front, you'll see it starts to form into that lovely kind of cup-shaped flower. And this is why it's easier, I find, to do it with a little bit of tape on here as opposed to doing it just with a glue gun piece at the end because it means you get control over where every single petal goes. You can see that flower starting to form there and I'm controlling every one of these petals. Now, the great thing about quill flowers is you can make your flowers as big or as small as you want them to be. So you can go larger or as small as you want, create that lovely three-dimensional flower where each one of those petals is just going to cup out and look very realistic. I'm going to cut off that last one because I didn't uh, I didn't heat that one. It looks a little bit odd now, I think. So we'll take off that last one. Yes, I'm quite liking the look of that flower now. And that, all you do then is cut this straight at the back and that's going to go onto the front of our card. And what I've done is cut out a couple of the leaves that go with it. Watch what happens when I shape these leaves. So one, two nice shaped leaves here. So if I just pop a couple of these shaped leaves here, little bit of the um, the hot glue gun here. So can you see I'm just going to position one down into place there. And the second one, your hot glue is brilliant for fixing your flowers in place when you do them, you see. And then a little bit of hot glue on the back of that one. And that's just going to go into the centre there. And that just forms a lovely little stopper for that card. It's turned out quite nice, hasn't it?